And we're back. Andrew, thank you for joining well, us. Well, thank you, Brian, for having me. <laughs> Let's show a clip of your latest movie. Right? Okay. Actions of Iran have shocked the civilized world. Go, go, go! Spread everything! Our embassy has been seized and more than 60 American citizens continue to be held as hostages. If we're going to go, then we need to go now. What happened? The six of the hostages went out a back exit. Where are they? The Canadian ambassador's house. We got revolutionary guards going door to door. These people die. They die badly. White House? Who wants the six of them out? Um, I guess first question for you is what type of film is this? Well, I think it's three kinds of films, sort of in one. I mean, I think that's what I loved about it, is that it defied easy categorization. It's like, it's a great thriller that's intense with a lot of energy where you're, you know, I was biting my nails reading through it. Uh, it's a genuine, funny comic satire. Uh, and it's also a spy story, you know, a CIA clandestine mysterious story. Uh, the three of those threads are woven together in one movie. Hopefully I did a good job making it feel like one organic story. But, you know, it's a neat thing because it's not like everything else. Well, I guess you'd say it's a thriller. Um, you know, it's stranger than fiction. It's, it's, a, it's a bizarre true story that, of, of a success. It, 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 hopefully the message that people will, will feel when they leave the screening of Argo is that, wow, look what, look what human beings can do when they're doing it for the right reasons, when they're, when they're not thinking of their own personal gain but for someone else's life. What, what surprised you personally about making this film about the story? Uh, when I was in my mid-20s and I heard the, what was then released as the story, the Canadian government helped smuggle out six Americans and save their lives from, from Iran. And, oh, my God, that's one good thing that happened here. Ted Koppel, you know, on Nightline, silver lining. But that's all we heard. That's all we knew until the Wired magazine article came out after the declassification of the file by the Clinton administration. And I read this story, and I thought, I kept going back. True story. Okay. This is because what I'm reading here is bizarre, and if it was just written as a fiction, people would go, get out, it's, it's, yeah, come on, no one's going to believe that. Um, that's what makes the story all the more gripping, is that, that what a daring, daring venture. What, what surprised you most about making this picture? Uh, the fact that it, uh, the situation happened, there was a true story. Um, not that I'm Mr. U.S. News and World reporting up on everything, but I had no idea until I read the script and then I read the Wired article on which the script is based. Um, I was lucky enough to meet Tony Mendez in, in Toronto. Um, and there's, I think there's a lot more than, than meets the eye here, but, uh, but it, it was boiled down to a terrific story. Um, but it surprised me, I guess, the most that it actually happened. I got an idea. They're a Canadian film crew for a science fiction movie. I fly into Tehran. We all fly out together as a film crew. I need you to help me make a fake movie. So you want to come to Hollywood and act like a big shot without actually doing anything? Yeah. It'll fit right in. We need a script. Argo, science fantasy adventure. Moonscape, Mars, desert. They need an exotic location to shoot. You need a producer. If I'm doing a fake movie, it's going to be a fake hit. You don't have a better bad idea than this? This is the best bad idea we have, sir, by far. The film was based off these declassified documents that now we know, now know about. If you could find anything else out about any kind of situation, what would Ben want to find out? What would you want to see declassified? I would probably want to see declassified some of the stuff around the invasion of Iraq and what happened once we got to Iraq. I would want to find out about the... I still think there's something about the Kennedy assassination that we don't know, although I know that's like the usual crazy conspirator myth. I would want to know exactly what state the moon landing happened in, because of course it never happened. No, I'm not one of those. I know, I, I know that's not true. Um, what would I do? I would, uh, I don't know, maybe the whole Bay of Pigs and maybe that whole what really happened down there? What was going on? Um, 
I think I think the, the overall message of Argo is that we are responsible for our own actions. In the very beginning of Argo, we talk about uh, the culpability of the United States in their in being involved in the who's running a country, and and then having to clean up our own mess basically out of that. Um, it's honest and responsible to do that. What are your thoughts on kind of, I guess, the serendipitous irony that, you know, there's uprisings today happening in the Middle East, this, you know, film is going back and it's still happening. What are your thoughts on that? How much the world has changed and how little it's changed. That we're still dealing with pretty much the same battles that we were before, the socio-political struggle that is going on and the ideologies that are clashing. and and But hopefully, like I said, it's through diplomacy. That's how we lead, through diplomacy. Leading by example, doing the right things. The Argo mission is doing the right thing. Is this, is this a political message? Are we going to see you running for office soon? Well, I have been kissing some babies lately. What did you have to tweak from the original story to bring it to the big screen? You know, I wanted to make sure that we absolutely preserved the essence of the truth. The audience, the embassy was overthrown. They hit out with the Canadians. The CIA came up with this movie story in conjunction with a real Oscar-winning movie artist, and that's how they were going to get him out. They went back there, and they took him. Um, that is all absolutely 100% true. I wanted to also make a good movie with a three-act structure. So you have the truth is often unwieldy and all over the place, so it needed to be you know, sculpted. It's, uh, it's not a, a, a docudrama, obviously. It's a feature. I had to maintain the integrity of the truth, but I also had to make it watchable and fun and exciting. Uh, and that was the tricky balance. The big thing is, is there's just stuff that didn't get included. Uh, I mean, there's a chase scene at the end, which was made up. But other than that, it's mostly about not the stuff that didn't get shown. So what, what I did was I, I kind of um, you know used this. Now we have this technology with Blu-ray where we can fit so much more data on a disc. So we just have our, we have the documentary. We have hours of interviews with the living people. So if you really dig it and you love the thing and you want to hear more, you can go hear in, you know, interviews about every little detail and everything that happened that you didn't see. Young Ben as a director. Young Ben. What are your thoughts on young Ben as a director? Oh, young Ben. I feel like scruffing his hair, you know? And I did, and that you saw in the movie how scruffy his hair was. Um, he's not young anymore. He's 40. This is, a, is an example of a man who has truly matured into, into himself and what he is really good at. He's, he's found what his real love, and I mean, he's a good actor, but I think he loves directing. I think he loves solving puzzles and, um, and being in command. I think he likes that and likes being specific and, and knowing his subject inside and out. And that's what made him good and, and amiable on the set. And it was a good, comfortable set. And, and he's, he's going to be, if he's not already, he's going to be known as one of the best directors in Hollywood. He's uh, extremely intelligent, has great taste, mm -hmm. and he can delegate authority very well, which goes back to his intelligence. Um, he's a great storyteller. And apparently, I heard him talking about it, he's been doing this since he was a kid. They'd go to see movies, and uh, he'd come out and tell them how he would do it differently, and and they directing student films, and before that, his friend, uh, goofing around. Uh, for God's sake, what were they, six, when they wrote the... the <laughs> Goodwill Hunting. Goodwill Hunting. Uh, but I, he's just got an innate sense of, a, of storytelling. He's a great storyteller. Ben, as a director for you, having you know worked with all the directors that you've worked with in the past, how did, how did Ben fare up? Very, very high on the list. He's... he's uh, one, one of the best directors I've ever worked with, if not the best. Last question, your future, is it gonna be directing, more directing? I hope I can, I'll direct movies as, as long as they keep hiring me, and uh, same goes for acting, and same goes for writing. You have 72 hours to get them out. They're getting a visitor. You gotten people out this way before? No. You're asking us to trust you with our lives. This is what I do, and I've never left anyone behind. 
I know who they are, and they know they're hiding out. It's over, Tony. If they stay here, they will be taken. Probably not alive. We're responsible for these people. I'm responsible. You really believe your little story is going to make a difference when there's a gun to our heads? I think my little story is the only thing between you and a gun to your head.